Hello everyone. On this lesson I'm going to cover a sample of past exam, exam questions on paper one GCSE higher maths. The first exercise here I have arithmetic sequences and I have a set of numbers 1, 4, 7, 10, 13 and the question asks you to find the nth term. First thing to do here is to see how the numbers change from 1 to 4, 4 to 7 and you notice here that this changed by plus 3. Because they change by plus 3 then means it's a multiple of 3. So you start by writing 3n. 3n is the numbers that are multiples of 3 but they normally start from 3 and then the next one is 6, 9, 12. My sequence starts from 1, not 3. So I need to make an adjustment of minus 2. And now this becomes the nth term of the sequence. Nth rule, basically, nth term. The nth term. Another type of questions is multiplication of mixed numbers. And to multiply mixed numbers, we change them into improper fractions by using the method a, b over c, with times a times the c, plus then b, this is the numerator, the denominator is c. So we change this into improper fractions, and then we multiply fractions like we do normally with multiplication. So the 2 and 1 3 becomes 7 over 3, and the 3, 3 over 4 becomes 15 over 4. It's a good idea to simplify the numbers before multiplication, so I divide 15 by 3, and divide 15 by 3 gives me a 5, 7 times 5 is 35 over 4, then how many times 4 goes to 35? 8 times, remainder 3, for denominator. And this is how we multiply mixed numbers. Another possible question are graphs, to recognize what type of graph we have. For example, if you see you, here you have four type of graphs, graph A, graph B, graph C, and graph D, and they give you four equations. So we need to find which equation is what graph. So if we start from y minus x to the power of 3, now if you don't memorize the graphs, then you need to carry out a test and see and find some points. So because if I found some points, I can recognize the graph, what type of graph we have. And let's say you have this equation, y equals minus x cubed. It's a good idea to put some points. Now if I put x equals 0, the y is 0. So the 0 comma 0 must be on the graph. And let's see the 4. So the graph A is impossible because the origin is not on the graph. For the graph B is possible, and then graph C is possible, and then graph D is possible. Both have the origin. Now let's go and find other points. For example, I put x equals 1. If the x equals 1, the y is minus 1. So the point 1 minus 1 is on the graph. But which of these graphs have this point? 1 minus 1. Now, 1 minus 1 is on the... 1 minus 1 is on the third quadrant. So here you have a mistake here. This is the D normally. Okay, not the C. Here is the D. This is the D. And the X to the power of 3 is the C. Okay, so this is the C here. Yes, is the opposite because you see the points basically okay you find some points and if you memorize the graphs also fine okay so the x square is a parabola and the only parabola i have here is the d and the one over x the reciprocal graph is the only graph that is the a this is the graph of the inverse proportion when the x is increasing the y is decreasing and that's how you can answer this normally if you get some points this help you find the right graph. And now let's see another type of question is to find congruent triangles. Now congruent tri triangles are triangles that look exactly the same. And if you see the only two triangles here that look exactly the same is the A and then D because the reason it is this if you check the opposite angle of the side 10 on both of the triangles is 80 
Now, if it's not given the 80, you need to find it by subtraction from 180 here. And you see the, ten, the opposite angle of the side 10 on the D is 80. This is not the case in the C and the B, okay? Because the opposite of the side 10 is 30, 55 on the triangle C, and on the triangle B is the 45. So the only pair that looks identical are the A and the D for these reasons. Another possible question is to have a problem solving with percentages and not percentages but to find the right answer, find the profit for example of let's say the profit, here they ask you to find the percentage profit. Before finding the percentage profit you need to find what is the profit of the sale and what we have here, we have the cost and the sales. Profit is the difference between sales and cost and the sales is he says he sells 24 chocolates at 50p each. So the sales is 12 pounds. This is half a pound. 24 times half, 12 pounds. The cost is how much he pay for this is 10 pounds. So the profit is two. Now how do I make it a percentage? You divide by the cost how much I bought the chocolates. So the profit you divide by cost, we give you 0 0.2. And to make it a percentage, you times by 100, so it's 20%. Another possible question is geometry using parallel lines and finding angles like this one. In this exercise you have a pair of parallel lines. You also have two angles inside the trapezium. Also you see a bigger triangle and one trapezium. So the 63 is a size an angle of a triangle and the B148 is an angle of the trapezium. Now how do we found X? To find the x, you need to go to the properties of parallel lines, and you know corresponding angles is, are equal. 63 is a corresponding to the E, so A is 63. And also, you know that the straight line has 180, so the missing angle here is 32, because this is the A and B, C is a straight line. And then, using the triangle A, E, B, you can find the x, because you know the total is 180. Another possible example is to use, in statistics and data, to use the stem and leaf diagram together with a table of some statistics and compare the data. So here we have a data of heights of year 9 girls in a school and year 9 boys in a school. Now the year 9 girls are presented in a table, some three statistics, the least height, the median height, and the greatest height. And for the boys, we have the stem and leaf diagram. Now, the stem and leaf diagram, they give you a key in a box to help you to see what the numbers mean. For example, 15 line 8 means 158 centimeters. And we have to compare the two distributions. Now, for the compare normally, we, cho we choose two statistics, the median and the range. Now, these two statistics are useful for comparing data. So what I need to find is the median for the girls and the median of the boys and compare the two. For the medias of the girls is given in the table, it's 165. Now for the boys is not given, but you need to find them using the numbers on the stem and leaf diagram. You know a total of how many numbers we have? Normally median is the, is the middle. So if there are 15 numbers, the middle is the eight because the middle is, you have seven numbers to the left, seven numbers to the right, and the middle is in the middle, the eighth. So you go to the stem and leaf diagram and find the eighth number, standing from the lowest. And the, this, uh, this median is 168, the eighth number on the... And by comparing this statistics, the median, you see that the height, the median height of the boys is higher. So you may say that the boys are taller than the girls. You can also compare the range of the two because for the table you have the highest minus the lowest and find the range which gives you the spread of the data that which shows the reliability of data. The lower the range, the better, more reliability, more reliable is the data. So we have low range. And you can also find the range very easily with the stem and leaf diagram because you have the lowest number, 158, and the highest number, 182. Now you can see this, that the range for the boys, the low range is preferred, so you may 
choose the girls have a lower range and you comment about this even though you have the, the higher is the height of the boys you have a lower is the low the range is higher for the boys another possible exam question is to give you a 3d shape and also give you a formula pressure is equal to force over area they give you the height of the prism this is a hexagon prism you give you the volume of the prism and what you need to find basically the pressure is 75 newtons so you have to find the force now using this force formula you can rearrange the formula and make force is equal to pressure times the area but if you know the area is missing here how do I found the area? I need to use the volume because the volume of the prism is area times the height because I know the volume is 18, I know the height is 3, I can find the area from the volume and the area is 6 square meters and therefore if I divide now the, if I times the 75, the pressure times the area, I can find the force. I rearrange the equation and make it force is equal to pressure times the area. And the last question I have here is numbers in standard form to put them in order of size. To put them in order of size, basically, you need to put all of the numbers in standard form. So you need to check which numbers are not in standard form. Or you make them decimal. The easier way is to make them all of them in standard form. The first one is in standard form. You don't change it. But you can change the second because the second is not in standard form. It's 67.2. To be in standard form, the number needs to be between 1 and 10. So you need to divide the 67.2 by 10 and make it 6.72 and multiply the 10 to the power of minus 4 by 10 and this gives you 10 to the power of minus 3. So this number is the same as this in standard form. Now the third number is not in standard form because 672 is higher than 10. So you divide this by 100 and also you times by 100 and then you have 6.72 times 10 to the power of 6 and the last number is not in standard form to make it in standard form you need to make it 6.72 and then you need to times this you need to divide this by 1, 2, 3, 4 places up to the point by 10 to the power of minus 4 and now from here, from this line you get an idea that about the lowest number and the lowest number is the number that has the, high, the, the highest negative power. And this is the last one, the 0 0.000672. The next highest negative power is the minus, yes, is the negative power of negative 3. So it is 67.2 times 10 to the power of minus 4. The next one is a power of 5. So it's the first one, 6.72 times 10 to the power of 5. And the highest is the power of 4, 10 to the power of 4. So it's 672 times 10 to the power of 4. And that's all questions I have from now. So this is a homework you can do and then to practice. And then if you have any questions, write on the comments. Subscribe if you haven't done so, so you can see more lessons like this. Thank you.